Hey channel, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Today I thought I'd share with you a couple of turntable projects that we've got active right now at our shop. Um, one of the fun parts of my job is, is being able to play with turntables. I love the differences between them, the, the drive technology, tone arms, cartridges, the setup, the precision involved. Uh, it's one of my passions. So um, I get to play with these day in and day out, which is, which is quite a lot of fun. Um, we have about five or six projects. I thought I'd go through them with you um, to kind of whet your appetite and to just inform you guys that, about the kind of work that we do and what sort of options are available out there for turntables, um, both vintage, modern, and in between. So first and foremost, I've got a Garage 401 here. This has been a long running project. Uh, this turntable I'm building for myself. This is um, a Garage 401 which happened to have been already restored by someone else. I believe it was Grail Audio. Um, the, the 401 and the 301 are used interchangeably. They're very similar mechanically. The vintage turntable from the 70s, um, very common um, or very similar to the 301, but it has a more 1970s look, which I tend to like better than the 301. The 301s look a little bit more vintage from the 50s and 60s. Um, but similar technology, if not exact, they just vary a little bit in, in the parts. Um, both idle drive turntables, super reliable, well built, um, and, and, and desirable. There's quite a collector market for the Garar turntables. This one, I've, I've had a, a plinth made for me for, by a great guy in the UK that does beautiful, beautiful work. I'll link uh, to his website below. Um, it has a really neat chrome accent built into the edge of the turntable. It's made in uh, what seems to be a, a maple, a wal no, I'm sorry, a walnut. Um, it's got some great isolation feet. So um, this is not a very intensive project for us. Uh, it's a matter of just fitting the two together. We're gonna do uh, removable RCA jacks. I like to be able to play with wires. So we will cut the RCA jacks into the back of the unit. It did already come pre-fitted with um, with a power cord so we can play with power cords as well. Um, and I haven't quite decided on the tone arm. I've got here sitting on it just an SME4, which is a wonderful tone arm. Um, I've got this in a couple different variations. The mount for it is in fact uh, an SME, you can tell by the oval shape. But I'm also considering this Dynarector 505. I'll probably try them both and see what I like better. Or even this Avis um, SA 1.2. The beautiful Japanese made tone arm that'll certainly made in here pretty well. Um, for cartridge, it's pretty clear. I'm gonna do the Sumiko Blackbird, one of my favorites. I think this is getting discontinued in the next month or two. We're not quite sure yet, but um, it's been a long standing cartridge in the Sumiko lineup, and we're excited uh, to use it uh, once again in this turntable. Um, because this is a British uh, made, this is made in England, and it's meant to run on, on uh, 50 hertz, I will do uh, LED upgrade. So I'll convert the bulb strobe light uh, that reflects onto the strobe platter. I will convert it to a, a digital LED version, and this is uh, the drive electronics I will install on it. And this will give us a brighter uh, strobe pattern as well as uh, the correct speed. Otherwise, if we used um, the wrong frequency, it, would, it wouldn't display correctly on here. Um, the other thing I'd do, I've got to create a pulley for it. Again, being a British market, the pulley is going to be the wrong size. So I have a we have a machine shop here, so I'll machine a, a new three-way pulley uh, for it. And it is three ways because it's capable of doing 33, 45, and 78s. So there you go, the Garage 401 project, uh, well on their way. Um, moving over here, I've got a VPI with a really nice Dynarector tone arm. This is a Klein turntable. He purchased um, a Lyra cartridge from us. So he's asked us, uh, as many clients do, he sent in the turntable and the cartridge. I'm sorry, he purchased the cartridge, sent in the turntable, and we will fit it for him and get it dialed in just right. This is a, a vintage VPI, fully suspended turntable, again, a Dynarector arm. Um, he's also had a, a, an odd request. He's asked us to try to balance the tone arms so that he can switch between several different head shells. Here he's got a, a very high-end Grado. 
Um, he's also provided a, uh, a different Sumiko cartridge and the Lyra will be the third one. So we're gonna have to mess around with the, the weight of the head shells and stuff to try to get it so that he's got very minimal tweaking if he wants to uh, convert between cartridges for different sonic quantities. Some people do that. Instead of multiple tone arms, they'll actually just um, change the cartridge with the head shell. So not an ideal situation. You always wanna have a cartridge perfectly calibrated to a specific tone arm, but I get it. This is a hobby, it's a lot of fun to play with. So we will try to do as well as we can to, to satisfy what he asked. Uh, moving over here, a Lin Sondek project that's also on the way. This Sondek LP12 is getting a series of upgrades. Um, first of all, we had this beautiful uh, light maple plinth made for us in, in Spain from a woodworker that we partner with. It's got a beautiful inlays on it, hardwood. Absolutely takes the LP12 to the next level aesthetically. We matched it with a SkyFi audio engraved uh, cork mat. Topped it off with a still points center weight. This is the LP1. This is probably one of the best um, weights available on the market, one of the most sophisticated ones. We will have to adjust the suspension on the 12 to accommodate for the extra weight of the, of the record weight. Um, we've got a, a specific LP12 stand that we use in order to adjust the suspension. I'll show it to you. It's here in our calibration stand. It's essentially um, a jig that you, it's sitting on the floor, but we will move it up to our turntable calibration stand when it's time to do the suspension on the LP12. Uh, we pulled the motor drive out of it. We usually upgrade the capacitors and any sort of parts that are aging. This is a very common failure on the LP12, these 200 volt, 47 microfarad capacitors. But I think we're gonna go a step above that on this tenor table. We've ordered an outboard power supply. So we will uh, eliminate that altogether and um, we'll do another video later down the road with the, when it's complete. The outboard power supply will also give us the ability to change between 33 and 44. 45 RPM at a push of a button, as well as get it the noisy part away from the rest of the turntable. Um, it came with a LP12, I'm sorry, with a Lin a Basic, but we've already upgraded to one of the best tone arms made by Lin, the ATOC. Um, and then we've got a, a Lin made um, isolation platform for it as well with these suspended uh, feet on it. So this will get fitted on here as well. And for cartridge, uh, again, someone, something from the Samiko line, maybe a Songbird. That's the new cartridge from Samiko that's doing so well. Um, we've had good luck mating that with this particular arm. So circle back, this should be online in, in about a month or so once we uh, get the power supply and, and finish up all the details. Here's a Thorns uh, 124. This is the competitor to the Garrard. This is a drive that just came in, a donor, what we call. So this will get a, a fresh coat of paint. This will get the mechanicals brought up to speed. We'll probably do new bearings, grease everything, calibrate it, and um, get it ready for the next owner. Uh, we'll do a custom plinth and a custom build. So this is uh, essentially just a donor piece going into our inventory. And it's finished in this really cool gray. Uh, a lot of them are are beige, uh, so we'll probably maintain the color. Standing in the back, uh, I recently did a video on these uh, record cleaning machines. If you go through to our channel, you'll see um, a kind of overview of these Ford uh, record cleaning machines that use a vacuum and a thread in order to clean a record. All right, and then over here in our calibration stand, we've got a, a 126 MK3 that recently sold. Uh, it's waiting for a Klein cartridge. I believe it's Sumiko Blackbird going on here as well. So that'll get uh, installed, calibrated, and at the door not far from from today. Uh, beautiful uh, 126. Look at all these controls, built-in strobe light, fine pitch adjustments, and uh, a semi-automatic arm, at least the lifting mechanism. So it's a cool temp table. All right. Um, that's it for the projects. Here's the AMT we finished a few months ago. 
I think we did a video on that as well. So if you're interested, uh, uh, go through our channel. Uh, it's a BBC uh, turntable that we modified and, and sort of modernized. And uh, I think that's about it. So this is uh, SkyFi Audio from Glen Rock, New Jersey. Uh, please uh, visit us online at skyfiaudio.com where you can see hundreds if not thousands of products that we've got listed, including a lot of these vintage turntables. And subscribe to our channel. Um, if we earned it, please uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, notifications and that'll keep us sort of motivated to bring you these videos. Uh, thanks for watching.